oil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. And welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with the coach, George Rebling, and the coach, Mike Krzyzewski. Gentlemen, how you doing? Nice to see you. 38 to 19 is the score, and the good news is for Wake Forest? Well, or? from a positive standpoint, Pat, Wake is controlling the tempo. They've held Kentucky nine points under their average for, for a half. Kentucky came into the game averaging 47 points in, in the first half. The negative side is that technical foul really hurt them. And number two, they cannot get Duncan in the offense. Mike? I just think the last minute and 10 seconds was disastrous for Wake Forest because overall they've been playing fairly well in spite of foul trouble. Now they're in real serious foul trouble, and I'm not sure if they're going to... You know, they're going to be able to handle this. And Kentucky kicking it in from all sides of the court. They put so much pressure on the opponent. Yeah, they, they do. And let's take a look here. Rusty LaRue is getting ready to shoot right here. And look at Walker put pressure on him. Now watch when LaRue shoots. There's pressure on the shot. Now after he shoots, look at Walker. Right here, he's like a sprinter. He's ready to go down the court. Now watch what happens when Kentucky gets the rebound. They throw the long pass. They complete it, and they get the three-point play. You know, that, that's, that's demoralizing when that happens, Pat. It's just very difficult. And everyone talks about how demoralizing Kentucky's offense can be. What about their defense? Well, take a look here. The main guy for Wake Forest, Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner. The Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta, side of the East Regional Final, where number two seed Georgetown is all set to take on number one seed UMass. Hello, everybody. Glad you could be with us here at the Georgia Dome. I'm Gus Johnson. Now it's quiet at the current time, but in a little while, it's going to be crazy here in Atlanta. This game features two stars, Allen Iverson and Marcus Camby, and each coach is worried about defending them. Let's start with John Calipari. He's going to get his numbers. He's a great, great player. Uh, he's going to shoot 20, 25, 30 times. Uh, if he's really hot, we're going home. Uh, what we're trying to do is just make the game hard for him, make it difficult so that he doesn't make 20 out of 25 shots. Well, if there's a key, it's Marcus. I mean, you, you've got to play him. I, I think he uh, blocks shots and clogs up the middle, which so helps them an awful lot defensively to put pressure outside in the half-court sets defensively and offensively. He's a fact he can face, he can post, he's a good passer. You know, so you, you've got to factor on him first and then see where you go from there. And that's difficult because he's a great player. Well, they're going to press us. Uh, we've got to attack the press and try to score. Um, obviously, we want to play it more of a half-court game, but they'll come out and trap in a half-court of 1-3-1. They'll trap out of their zone and, and do things to make the game uh, more of a healthy Oh, let's get in the ball to the big fella. Oh, no question. Marcus Camby is the player of the year. You know you got to get some offense from him. But if you're Georgetown, you like to press. They're led by their first-team All-American, Allen Iverson. I expect him defensively to be very active. This is the first meeting between these two teams, the winner to go to the Final Four. Now let's go back to New York, where our Pat O'Brien is standing by. All right, Gus, thank you, QB. We'll see you in a little bit. Uh, break down the game for me, George, quickly. Well, from Georgetown's standpoint, number one, they want to get Camby in foul trouble. Number two, they must make their foul shots because they're not a good foul shooting team. From UMass's standpoint, they want a potent three-point production in there, and they also want to try to get Iverson in foul trouble. They'd love to open up the floor for Allen yes. Iverson, too, as well. Mike, you? Yeah, Allen Iverson is the key. If for Georgetown, can he have the freedom to run? From UMass, will they come up and make him come back to get the ball and make him use more time? And there are going to be some guys who are going to get boards that we haven't talked about very much. The Dana Dingles of the world for both teams. All right, we hope everybody sticks around and enjoys Kentucky and this game and then sticks around for a good game that's going to be. We've already crowned a champion today, and we have an undefeated team. Fort Hayes State beat Northern Kentucky 70-63. to The Fort Hayes State Tigers look to become the only third Division II team to go undefeated in the season. Sharik Simpson fills the passing name there. and In for the jam, and Coach Ken Shields from Northern Kentucky looks on and says, huh. Paul Cluxton kicks it to Andy Listerman, buries the three for a one-point lead, and then four days, Jeremy Keister. He's there for the putback. Watch this work inside. And the Tigers win the D2 championship, Division II, this afternoon. Form Questionable now, we're told, for the second half. So, Sean, wherever you are, and we think we know where you are, we hope you're going to be fine, and we hope to have you back soon. Feel better. Thanks for watching Pennzoil at the half. Coming up, Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery and Michelle Tafoya. We hope that Sean is there for the second half of the Midwest Regional Final. We'll see you later. Enjoy the game. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, 
Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Featuring Alpine World Cup skiing from Lillehammer. Then at 1.30, the top players and coaches of the year are honored at the Boost Naismith Awards. Following the road to the Final Four, the regional final doubleheader, Syracuse takes on Kansas, then Mississippi State and Cincinnati. It all comes away tomorrow, only on CBS Sports. And look at them step up to pressure in the backcourt. Rag guys, they can use the dribble. They play in Kentucky is so difficult. They take you out of your action. Now, some counters have been provided for Duncan. There's a little more motion, setting up box-to-box -box with that weak side help. Here's the one of the few high lows. And Pope and Walker contested. And the foul is on Mark Pope, and that's his third. Good catch by Duncan in traffic. Uh, uh, Rick, uh, looking at his assistance there, Jimmy O'Brien, but one of the mainstays of their offense is to get it to the top of the key, look down, and Duncan able to do some damage. He had a kick-out pass. They spotted up Braswell a little better. So Dave Odom not sitting there at halftime. Come up with some adjustments. Pope to the bench with three fouls. Kentucky's been called for five this half. And Duncan's first free throw rimmed out. Tim has five points. Okay, watching Kentucky decimate this NCAA field, it, it's sort of reminiscent of my coaching career. But we were usually out of the game uh, before the pregame prayer. So you played the role of Wake Forest in Utah. <laughs> in played in this tournament all every night, long, all regardless long. of the opponent. Uh, it didn't matter. Uh, and it's just an amazing facility this team has. The stamina and energy. I think they're the best shape of any team in the country, Sean. Mm -hmm. Just a relentless nature. Duncan rebounds the miss. Wake is chipping away. They're on a 9 nothing run now. Largest lead was 28. They have it down to 19 with some time left. 10.40 showing on the game clock. And why not get Duncan involved a little bit so he's been able to find... Look, they got the, look at the zone up by Walker. And this is the first time Brown's had a good look this half. Gould's be the fall away. And Anderson, the push. And this is where they're tough on the three. Right on cue, Dell buries the three. He has 15. And right away, the defensive energy of T. Delp. They drive you back with the dribble. And all of a sudden, five dark shirts in the lane, and double zero provides endless relief with the deep tray. And Duncan showing ball handling skills. And look at the recovery, though. Delk back to play Peral. They complement the energy in the backcourt. Braswell guarded in the man-to-man -man by Delk. Epps on LaRue. Played this whole second half with four fouls. That's LaRue. Now they get the back screen and then dunk it. So they're doing some more things. They're running the route. Nice play by Walker. And Delk gets it back to Antoine Walker. Goolsby the rebound. Still a 22-point game, Kentucky with the lead. 9.37 remaining. And Anderson and Peral got tangled up, and the foul is on Anderson, his second. These are exciting times for basketball fans in the northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area. Cincinnati wins last night in Lexington. Kentucky playing here. Northern Kentucky in the Division II championship game of the day. And Georgetown College, only about 10 miles away from the University of Kentucky, played for the NAIA championship and lost. A lot of great basketball in a relatively small radius. A bastion of basketball prowess and interest. And there's that Cincy Mississippi State bracket southeast. The power of Huggins guys against Georgia Tech. And Mississippi State a lot better. The unknown entity to a lot of people in the country. Not the pollsters or people who want to follow the game. They do have some capabilities. Seems like they played much of the year trying to get Dante Jones acclimated to the Richard Williams. <laughs> to Richard Williams <laughs> and to the Division I level. He's obviously a great talent, and now he really seems to be meshing with his teammates. Uh, I, I say that because uh, we were down there in Starkville, and he, Richard was all over him because he wasn't making the extra pay. In fact, they developed the philosophy. The first time you touch it, you got to give it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, he gets the puppy set coming off the bus. Dells hit his puppy set and buried another three. And he's closing in on Jamal Mashburn now. Tony is 18 points today, needs four 
to tie Mashburn for fourth place on the all-time UK scoring list. The only players ahead, Dan Issel, number one, then Kenny Walker and Jack Gibbons. The new place is a pretty good team. Stripped was Duncan after he rebounded Braswell's miss. And before he, now look at the alley. Oh. And Braswell went up to contest it with McCarty. So Walter's alter couldn't finish the mass. Duncan down the lane. Kim Duncan. He's tangled up with Epps. Did you see him pick him up, though? Yep. Uh, he's really a stylish young guy. The, the Fab Five is something you hear from Michigan. Mm -hmm. The original Fab Five back in the 40s for Kentucky, believe it or not. Rupps, Runts, another one that came mm -hmm. on. Later. Just such great history of basketball. The Unforgettables, the Fiddlin' Five, all those terrific names. Of course, you played with and against many of those people. <laughs> well, I remember reading about them. <laughs> A few of them, Alex Groza, Wawa Jones, Beard, pretty good. One of Rupp's early teams. It's a religion down there. And when before the U.S. Senate uh, minority whip said basketball is like a religion. You're either saved or lost. <laughs> LaRue, a long three. That was from Duluth. First points of the game for Rusty LaRue. He averages 10.3 per game. And taking out of the game with the fouls. One yep. of the reasons, too. Showing a lot of style, a lot of heart. Kentucky by 18, Goolsby. A reach in. He didn't expect Walker to turn in his direction. And that's three fouls on Stephen Goolsby, the sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Peral tests the waters down low. Guarded by Pope. And the Demon Deegan bench thought there should have been a foul there. And the most disappointed guy in the building, uh, Tony Rutland. Yeah. Just a shame with that knee problem at the end of the year. And Tino does the obvious. He goes for the season guys, Anderson, Walker, and Epps. There at the table getting ready to check in. Pope, strong move inside. Duncan forced a stop, and then he stuffed the second one. And on the alternating possession, it goes back to the Demon Deacon. And Duncan is a guy who could force a poke to change his religion. He can dominate. He doesn't go for the fake. Patience and the ability to elevate. Timeout, Kentucky. Timeout, Kentucky. The Odom, uh, Sean McDonough, didn't get this team for the ACC championship. Without doing some changes, spacing. Oh, stretch the D, and that time Duncan finds Peral, who's been subdued. They've been up on him. He has been unable to get the opportunity shots. Moore is getting back into it with a three-point shot. Seven out of eight this half. Braswell in trouble. Pretty. And they get 10 more seconds sure. to get it over half court. That had taken seven seconds, but mm -hmm. they get a fresh 10 count. They're on a 24 to 9 run since Kentucky took its largest lead at 57 29 with 13.05 left. That time, Duncan lost it in front of the Kentucky bench. Now, this is why you don't ask a big guy to do a lot of things. He went between his legs, and Davey, I'm sure the drill has been used. Mm. That's better suited for, or for guys who are better equipped. Yes. A joint with the bounce. McCarty. In the Dell, he took a pretty good bump from Braswell. Epps, Anderson, and Walker also on the floor for Kentucky. And a little more pop in the, the Wake Forest defense. Quicker to the ball. And the shot clock down to 12. Game clock at 4.45 remaining, and Kentucky leads by 13. And this is not their game to go late in the shot clock. End up with a tough one. They get the, well, almost get a tip. Duncan got the rebound as Epps missed the running one-hander. 16 rebounds for Duncan. And the mismatch inside, they, they're looking to help on Anderson. And they switch back. McCarty's got him. One four set for Wake Forest. Peral in for Duncan. Block for the foul call. Davey moving guys around a little bit. Peral with the high post. Each elbow's got a postman. 
and then you see Duncan move himself down the duck in and he just shields off the defense doesn't get there Anderson a little slower not the attention to detail right now by Kentucky and it's a 12-point game Georgetown and UMass coming up next in the East Regional Final UMass trying to get to its first ever Final Four and the Demon Deacons Closer still, 11 points down. Nice screen for Delk. Wow. He's had a huge game. 20 points now for Tony Delk. Four minutes left. They come up with a nice set play, Sean. Easy. Jerry. And Goolsby took it back and shoots up three. And Peral tipped it for Braswell. A nice comeback by Braswell, too. Gets Duncan back underneath. Tough match for Walker down there, too. They don't want to take quick shots, Bill, but they're almost in a situation now where they have to. With time running out, Duncan fouled as he was trying to accept the pass. Walker called for the foul, his third. Oh, well, they find the pass to the top there. Right by the foul, and now look at this strength. And Walker at a disadvantage, more of a forward defender, gets locked under the tin where you can't do much damage. And McCarty goes out, replaced by Pope. Nine team fouls against Kentucky, so in the next one, it'll be an automatic two free throws. The rest of the way for Wake. And that Pope in there to play Duncan. Tonight on CBS. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, touched by an angel. Walker, Texas Ranger, all tonight. You may, CBS. You may have to call him, Dr. Quinn. I know. <laughs> I appreciate the Kentucky. Her, I should say. Yes. <laughs> the Kentucky medical staff helping me get back in the game. Delk. Well, that's why you love seniors, huh? Two major goals. That was a two-point field goal. 22 now for Delk. And that ties Jamal Mashburn for fourth on the all-time point list at UK. 1,843 points for Delk and Mashburn. And just Gibbons, Walker, and Issel ahead of him, huh? Of course, Mashburn left early. Delk's gone the full four. Blocked by Pope as he swatted the shot by Braswell. He just keeps on trucking. One of the great attitudes on this team. Fought Duncan, then helped out. Contributors, that's all they look for. 13-point game, 240 left, 70-57, Kentucky. And Delk so active off the basketball. They run it down to 10 with the bounce, maybe Walker to the goal now. Duncan at a disadvantage. Charge, good call. Yep. Jimmy Burr right on top of it. Rick Pitino way out of the coach's box to point at John Cal as if to say to Jim Burr, Cal had a different call. Got to call it. Got to call it. And now the officials are going to confer. Now, Dave Odom is furious because he got one, and that's a simple one for the officials. Yeah, he walked yeah. almost to the midcourt line to Pitino, way out of the coach's box. He might have a legitimate point because John Cal, it appears, was making a different call. And now they're just diffusing that issue totally with Dave Odom. John Cal saying he had it the other way. You're going to have the jump ball or possession arrow situation here. Uh, Rick. Uh, he's very lucky. Yeah, he's got got away with it. And the officials are still conferring. Jim Burr it was the official on the side called a charge. John Cal was under the basket and apparently was going to call a block. A Burr, I thought, had the right call. And if this call goes against Peral, which could be if they change it, that's Ron Peral. That's five in the uh, possession arrow is Kentucky. So that's what's happening. They both get one. They've announced the foul on Walker so far. And the foul on Peral. Which is five, right? That's well, they the compromised or copped out, depending on how you look at it. Uh, Rick Pitino got after John Cal, who had made a signal. 
and then ran out of the box. So he got the best of the entire deal. Yes, I believe did. it was a charge by Burr, and I think you'll think, uh, Kurt, mm -hmm. Jimmy Burr had that call. Yes, he did. And now it should be the technical foul. The two shots. I mean, all of this. That's a charge. Yeah, that's that's a shame. And, and is John Cal oh, in the back, underneath the basket, is coming out. He's got his hands on his hips, and you see Jimmy Burr into your screen. So, not a good play for Wake, or not a good turn of events. And they certainly needed it to go their way. Down by 13. Now with 2:20 left. For all fouls out for the second straight game. He had 13 points in this one. The foul on Walker, his fourth. And trying to go a little bit of a zone. It's going to let them bring the clock down. I mean, they're trying to bump in the corner. They get it for Dell. Smart team. They get the foul as well. Oh, a major Goldsby foul. And the fourth on Steven, who's given Wake Forest a big boost off the bench. He averages four points a game and a rebound and a half. And he's at 12 points and five rebounds today. And the three foul shots on this attempt. The key point of this game, little trouble. Kentucky looks to the bench, comes in with Walker and Delp. Solid understanding. Seniors stepping up. I believe Anderson's the guy to come in at that time, too, as you look at these seniors. And so touching what Rick Pitino said about these three. He said he'd be happy if his sons grew up to be like any of the three of them. Yes. Such high esteem for the kind of people they are, Pope, Delk, and McCarty. And having met them uh, during the course of this season, the number of times you would concur, as I would. And they have given up maybe their selfishness or their mm -hmm. self-interest would be a better way for the common good. They want to win the NCAA championship. Duncan can't get the peak under the basket. Goolsby. The tip by Allen. And a timeout, Wake Forest. With 147 remaining, Kentucky leads by 14. Michelle Tafoya back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Kentucky is surviving a spirited second half run by Wake Forest, in large part due to the performance of Tony Dell, 25 points today, and he will finish his career in fourth place with a maximum of two games remaining. In the final four, not enough time to score the nearly 200 he'd need to move up to Jack Gibbons. It is a Kentucky game, though. <laughs> yes, it is. The home run. Uh, clubs have tried that against them. I think what they do, they like to give you a couple. They speed up the tempo of the game when you do it against them. Braswell in traffic. It gets tipped out. And controlled by Goolsby. Then blocked by Delk. Minute 25 left, 16-point lead. Joseph Aminette just into the game. Missed that shot. He's a freshman, Birdstown, Tennessee. Seems very limited action this year. But due to the absence of Rutland, foul difficulties in this game. He's in. And the Cats sense that they are on their way to the Final Four. And they also will have posted a history-making win. This will be all-time victory number 1648 one more than North Carolina for the all-time lead the tradition the lineage uh, CM Newton deserves a lot of credit for hiring Rick Pitino uh, a lot of people didn't know if he could be enticed down to the bluegrass country took this program and enriched it already well Epps Makes the first and the one and one. The executive producer of CBS Sports is Rick Gentile. The coordinating producer of NCAA basketball, Bob Dikas. Today's game produced by Bob Monsbach, directed by Larry Cavalina. The coordinating producer of the road to the final four is Eric Mann. At the half was directed by Bob Matina. The associate director of today's game, one of the 10,000 men of Harvard, Ken Mack, and the broadcast <laughs> associate, Steve Karasik. Braswell for three. Goolsby. Oh, look out. That was very close to Delk coming down on his head. I, I love the way they two, the two teams play, though. Very mm -hmm. clean, hard played. Uh, you watch Kentucky play, and the way they press you, it's almost like playing tennis, batting the ball back and without rutling in the game. It, it just was not a possibility. Here's the potential. Was scary. Yeah, it was. And, and they both helped one another here, too, which is nice. 
Unfortunately, Delk had the right arm out to break his fall. Goolsby at the free throw line. He has 13 points now. Talk about the pressure on Kentucky, the pressure to win it all. More pressure on this team than any other team in the country, and that really trickles down to so many people, including Coach Patino and his family. The immediate, uh, here they go for the home run again. I think they're as loose as they've ever been. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been fortunate enough to see Kentucky each year that Rick Patino's been down there. They're so relaxed and confident. And here, here we go. Here comes Bill make a play. Not bad. <laughs> well, the McCarty says, give me some of that. <laughs> That's you the first rebound. I went up against Duncan McCarty. Undeterred. Final 40 seconds, and Braswell called for a reach-in on Epps. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game. From Wake Forest, Stephen Goolsby, 14 points and a career-high seven rebounds. And for Kentucky, Tony Delk at 25 points, now fourth all-time at Kentucky. Nine out of 13 from the floor was the senior, Tony Delk. Epps makes the first. And Oliver Simmons comes into the game. And Walter McCarty gets a big hand as he goes out. And I think his personality there, <laughs> where is Rick? A little bear hug for O'Brien as well. And Pope, uh, this team's together. A great giving, concern for one another. I think it emanates from Walter in a lot of respects. He not only can sing with a high octave, but he plays at a high octane. <laughs> Walter McCarty has sung the national anthem before UK basketball games and his gymnastics meets on campus. He has a wonderful singing voice. And you talked about the pressure on the family. You can see the relief and the happiness all over the face of Joanne Patino. And alongside her brother, Bill Bernardi, a friend of Rick's from when they were kids. So you mentioned from top to bottom, they feel it as much as anybody. A relief. Pal Lillian alongside there. So the Cats are back in New Jersey, and uh, probably the only problem Rick Patino has is finding enough seats. And the net, long heave, Anderson. Four Anderson sends it in. And a close for the edges. Duncan on the bench. Goolsby missed a three. Might be Duncan's last game in Wake Forest. Dave Odom doesn't know. Oh. Now D. Muhammad off the feed from Anderson. Well, basketball's a religious experience. Might as well end it with Muhammad and Pope applauding in the rear. <laughs> the Kentucky Wildcats on their way to the final four. Saturday, Kentucky will take on the winner of the game that comes next between Georgetown and UMass. Congratulations to the Wildcats. Now 32 and 2 for Michelle Tafoy and Bill Raftery. Sean McDonough saying so long. We'll join Pat O'Brien after this. Well, coming up next, we'll send it on to Atlanta for the East Regional title game between second seeded Georgetown and number one UMass. Super soft 
Allen Iverson paces Georgetown. He's got that look today, and if this number three breaks free, there will be a scoring spree. But for UMass, junior center Marcus Camby has been the man of the minute, averaging more than 16 points and 10 boards in the tournament. There they are. They're getting ready to play. That's next here on CBS. Let's send you back to Minneapolis now. Michelle Tafoya there with the winners. All right, Pat. Well, I'm with Tony Delk. He had 25 points, and in the excitement, I'm not even sure you noticed, you moved into fourth time, all, uh, fourth place all time on the scoring list, tied with Jamal Mashburn. Now, that's a great feeling, but I would all the coach and the coaching staff and to my teammates, and I thought we played extremely hard out there, and our defense really was uh, the key to us going on a big, big run like that. I know that you guys were disappointed with the outcome of last season, and now you're on your way to the Final Four in New Jersey and ready to make up for it. We have two more games we want to win, but uh, we have to take care of, uh, you know, Whoever wins the UMass uh, Georgetown game, but I think we'd be ready and our coach can prepare us well for the game. Congratulations, Tony. Thank you. Coach Rick Patino, just another win, but you know, Wake Forest wanted this one too. They went on a nice run there in the second half. They certainly did. They deserve a great deal of credit. You know, at halftime, I thought we, we played one of the better games of the season. And our guys were docile, somber. And I said, guys, you just played the best half of basketball. Yes, it wasn't acrobatic. You didn't have all these incredible dunks, but you put on a clinic defensively and you're not sky high. I said, they're making you play semi their style. You just held a great basketball team to under 20 points. And then suddenly they, they, they realized what they were accomplishing, and they were remarkable on defense in the first half. We had a withstand. Tough playing with a lead against a good team. We will see you in the Final Four. Congratulations. Do you have any tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Pat, we'll be back with you after this. All across America you want your seniors to lead you to the final four well folks it was a perfect world today for rick patino and the kentucky wildcats they're going to the meadowlands and mike krzyzewski you know what that feels like well it's great and you can watch those kids their their smiles they're 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 so satisfied they had a great defensive effort it was an unbelievable uh, game plan by Rick and his staff, and they executed. That's one of the reasons they feel so good. And you make a point about winning on Saturday. It's kind of fun to win on Saturday. Yeah, then you watch everybody now, and you, you know you're going to the, the Final Four. Now you, you, you get, a, a, I think, a better, better atmosphere, a better feeling for it than the other teams. All right, George, we haven't forgotten you. Coming up at 6 o'clock, UMass and Georgetown. The winner here will meet this Kentucky squad. We'll be back to talk about that one in a moment. Stay with us. be the next one will it be UMass or will it be Georgetown coming up on CBS from Atlanta in the east the Hoyas and the Minutemen George Raveling Pat this this is a magnificent game this is a game that was was made for heaven in fact I heard they're gonna carry this game in heaven <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at uh, Allen Iverson working out and you had a comment about him well he has such a great look Pat he he has the look of a champion and that's what they've written uh, to this game and I, it's gonna be a terrific game Pat, I really believe officiating could determine the outcome of this game. If the game is called closely, that's going to favor Georgetown. If it's ca ca called loosely, it's going to favor UMass. All right, that's a 6 o'clock tip here on the East Coast, and we'll get you there in a moment. Stay with us. Hope you're enjoying the hoops here on this Saturday. here on CBS, Georgetown and UMass. That game coming up right after this. George, big game? Pat, only me and my laundry man know how excited I am about this game. I got so excited, I'm standing up, Mike. Well, I'm, I'm going to stand up in just a second next to my buddy George. <laughs> coming up, it's Georgetown and UMass. We'll have that for you after a message and a word for your local station. Stay with us.